Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be working on this rather cheap Urbera ripsaw that I managed to pick up off a car boot Sunday gone and I paid a whopping £4 for this. That's right, £4. It's got no cable on it and I don't know whether it works or not but for £4 it's got to be worth a shot, right? I don't have any spares for this, so it might be a multi-part video depending on what I find. It might be a, a video where I can't fix it. Uh, I'm really not sure because, like I said, I don't have any spares. I've never worked on one of these before. The reason I've bought this is because I'm doing a new workshop at the minute, a new uh, office and workshop, you know, where I can record my videos and do my repairs from and stuff like that, as you can see from this workshop fun thing here. But... Basically, I'm trying to get as many tools as I can, as cheap as I possibly can, and I managed to get a circular saw the other day, even though I've got a circular saw, I managed to pick one up the other day, it was a Makita one, and I paid something like £30 for it. I've also bought a bunch of uh, impact drivers as well, which I'll be doing a video on, so I've got like three impact drivers, and I managed to pick this up as well, like I said, for £4 from the car boot. It was originally £3, but the guy didn't have any change, he only had a pound in change, so I said, you know what, just... I'll, I'll take it for £4, whatever. A pound's not really going to make much of a difference, is it? So, yeah. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dakota. I'm an electronics technician. I mainly work on games consoles, but sometimes I like to dabble in other stuff too. Just like the TV that I picked up a couple of days ago while I was on the way to the shop. When I come back, I spotted a TV, uh, you know, just laying at the side of the road, thrown out for scrap. So that's been sat in my kitchen drawing for the past 48 hours. I'm going to give it about another 24 hours, and then I'm going to hopefully make a video on it and see if it works. Well, I'll plug it in if it works, and I won't make a video. But if it does, doesn't work, then I'll make a video trying to fix it. But anyway, I'm waffling. Let's get on with this repair. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, all of that stuff. And also, let me know in the comments, have you ever worked on a tool, or what would you like to see me work on next? So anyway, I'm going to tear this down. I'm going to be honest, I cannot find my rear of 3 core flex cable. So what I've had to do for the purposes of this video, which you, some of you might say I'm a fool for doing it, but what I've had to do is I've got a 50 meter extension reel. And I obviously use that when I'm you know, taking the vacuum outside or something like that, but I've cut the plug off it along with a decent run of cable. I haven't measured it or anything like that, but I've cut the plug off it with a decent run of cable. Worst case scenario, I've lost a few metres and I can just put the plug back on. Uh, you know, best case scenario, I can use this cable for this ripsaw and just buy a plug for like a pound to mother from the hardware shop because they're not expensive and I've got boxes of brand new fuses that I can use to install into it. This is a 13 amp fuse, which should be the right rating for this as far as I'm aware. We got 220 to 240 volts, 1100 watts. So yeah, 13 amps. I would assume um, is going to be the correct rating for use for this, which is absolutely fine. I mean, to be honest, most of the world don't use fuses anyway. So what, really, what what difference does it make? There's always a breaker that can trip if there's a problem. <laughs> but I will say as well, working with power tools, uh, you know, to repair power tools can be dangerous if you get them wrong and you know, it's something dangerous. It can it can be the ma a matter of life or death. So please, don't use this video as any kind of guide or tutorial because I am not a repair technician. Uh, I am not a power tool repair technician. There are channels on YouTube that are doing that, but I don't. I, you know, I'm not a professional tool repair technician, and I'm not going to be responsible if you repair your own tool based on one of my videos and then injure yourself or someone else because of it. So just bear that in mind, this is not a guide, it is purely for entertainment purposes only. So, with the logistics out of the way, I'm going to get this apart because I can't test it until I actually install a cable. It could be a really simple, quick video. I don't know. Like I said, I bought this from a car boot. I went to the car boot specifically to buy a cement mixer, which my brother-in-law had seen while he was doing a stall of his own. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my brother-in-law works for a... Uh, second hand shop and they do house removals and every week they'll do a car boot and sell the stuff that they take from houses you know the stuff that people don't want anymore they'll do like house clearances when people have passed away and stuff like that and they'll resell the stuff so he phoned me up on early on Sunday morning uh, we're on Thursday now but he phoned me up early Sunday morning and he said oh 
there's this guy literally at the store next to me with a cement mixer. He wants £45 for it. So, okay. So I'll pop down. I'll have a look. Uh, so he's asked the guy to put it to one side. And when I got there, I managed to haggle the guy down to £30 for the cement mixer. That worked. That was a fully working cement mixer for £30, 63 litre. I looked it up online before I bought it and they cost £164.99 for that specific model. So I was like, oh, great, bargain. I need a cement mixer. I'm doing the, uh, you know, the new workshop. So I need a cement mixer. I'll buy that. So I bought that and then I went for a little wonder and I managed to stumble across this and pick this up. So, you know, great. I've been looking for a rip saw or reciprocating saw if you're from anywhere else in the world. Uh, we shorten it down to ripsaw just because we're lazy. Um, but I was looking for a ripsaw, and more specifically, I was looking for one to potentially try and repair for a video because, you know, not only is it an interesting video, or most of the time, but it's also cheap tools. And, well, I'm a cheapskate. I like to save money. So, yeah, there is that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's get this apart. It looks like it's fairly easy to strip down. Looks like it's been badly beaten up. Uh, the good news is, I already have some Herbera tools. I say some, I've got a drill and a impact driver. That's it. That's the only Herbera tools I've got. But, this is Herbera. And, you know, if I can get a ripsaw, even though it's not a cordless one, then great. And especially for £4. Ah, it looks like it separates here. Ah, there we go. Just just a little bit on the tight side. It's okay. Right. Okie dokie. Right, so there's the safety switch. So we've got a fairly straightforward control board there. Literally a, a relay, capacitor, a bunch of diodes. Okay, well, that's... Uh, it's not bad. Um, I assume the diodes are for um, converting from AC to DC, you know, the bridge rectifier. Um, I would assume, anyway. There are four diodes there, so that would make sense. Right, so we'll get the uh, snag clip off. Or the anti-tug anti clip, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what they're called. Right, so we'll take that off there. And I'm going to, just really quickly, before I do anything, I'm going to thread that onto here. Even though it's damaged, so it's a little bit ripped, that's fine. I can live with that. I'm going to thread that through there. And that fits, oh, that fits lovely. Well, it's a little bit, it's a little bit tight. Uh, I'll warm this up and stretch it a little bit so I can get that on. So I'm going to switch my hot air down to... 140 degrees should do it. 140 degrees Celsius, that is. I'm just going to heat this rubber up just to stretch it a little bit so I can get it over the cable. It might be better to go a little bit hotter, actually. Uh, 170 should do. It's not going to melt it, or it shouldn't. Just warm it up a little bit just so I can stretch it over. There we go. Beautiful. Need a little bit more. It's actually not very warm, so I increased to ten. I'm not keeping the heat on it for very long anyway, so it's not gonna hurt too much. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, so I've just put that over there just so I don't forget. And um, now let's work out how this is wired in. Yeah, so this must connect this must convert to DC. So, one issue we've got is that we don't need three core cable for this. We need two core, but that's fine. I can just chop the earth off on this and just, you know, leave it hanging loose, leave it hanging free. Just going to grab a smaller screwdriver bit and I'm going to unwire this thing. So, we got that screw there for the neutral wire and that screw there for the live wire. There we go. And that is that cable off. Nice and simple. So live is going to be just there on this side. So I've got to remember that so I don't reverse the polarity. And what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to measure this so as we've got exactly the same amount of cable without the sheath on it. I'll just mark that. I don't have cable strippers as well in case you're wondering. Never end up using them. But one thing you've got to be careful of is that you don't end up breaking into the cable itself if you're just slicing around it like I just have. Some of that uh, dust on there. I don't know what that's called. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop this earth wire off. And in fact, I'm going to expose just a little bit more of this by slicing down the middle. Like that. And then I'm going to chop it off a little bit below the surface. I will say as well, if you're doing this, be careful. Don't get slicing your hand off. If I hurt myself, that's up to me. You know, that's my problem. No one else's. There we go. So I'll just remove that earth cable. I'll just leave it inside there. So you might think because there's an earth cable exposed there and it's connected to the plug here, we're going to have a problem. We wouldn't, but I am going to unscrew this and I'm going to disconnect it and cut it from the other side as well. So as it's just loose inside there. Um, I'm not going to actually leave the earth cable connected to the prong, even though it wouldn't hurt anything if I did. So before I finish assuming this works, I'll cut that earth cable off and make sure it's disconnected from the plug itself. So the good thing about using this cable here is I know it's going to be able to carry the current. I don't know the exact AWG rating. And I don't think it's on the cable either. Uh, is it? 1.25 mil cable. I don't know what AWG that is for American viewers, but it's 1.25 mil cable. It's more than capable of carrying the uh, the current we need it to. So it's absolutely fine. You know, it's designed for well, it's designed for um, extension leads. So, and it's not a cheap extension lead either. I'll just unscrew that terminal. Uh, I think I need to expose a little bit more than that, actually. It is rather annoying that someone's uh, removed it from it. You know, removed the cable from it, cut the cable off. But it's something I see quite often, to be honest. You know, people cutting the cable off. Uh, sometimes the scrap mans do it, or the scrap men do it. I went to say scrap mans done it. Come out wrong. Sometimes the scrap man does it. Sometimes it's the you know the actual owner of it, the person who's throwing it out. They're like, oh, I'll save that cable. You end up with a box of cables that you're never going to use, <laughs> or rarely use rather. Uh, that's a little bit too much now. That's annoying. Uh, okay, I'll get my uh, wire cutters and uh, I'll trim those cables down back down a little bit. So I'll use my side cutters for this, which you can get. From my online store, consolefix.shop. I'm just going to trim a little bit of this back. I don't want to make too much of a mess. There we go. Beautiful. So, the brown wire. So, the brown wire in the UK is always going to be the live wire. And the blue wire is always going to be the neutral wire. Just for the record. Unless otherwise stated, you know, it could be different if uh, someone's wired it up backwards or something. But wiring regulations in the UK brown for live and blue for neutral, or negative as some people call it for some reason. <laughs> All right, so time for the neutral wire. Make sure they're tight. Good. Time for the tug test. And that one didn't screw in. That one did. Okay. I guess I'll uh, trim this back a little bit more. I guess I must, must have cut a little bit too much off it. There we go. Twist it back up. That was rather silly of me. 
But that's why you always give it the tug test. Make sure that it's in there nice and secure. See, now that's too much. <laughs> Damn it. That's just flung everywhere now. That's better. There's still a teeny tiny bit of exposed copper, but that's not going to do anything. You know, there's a very slight gap there. A couple of millimetres. It's not going to hurt. Hmm, didn't bite. Well, that's annoying. Might have to add a bit of solder to this. I don't have any crimpers, if you're wondering to crimp some new ends onto it, whatever they're called, I don't know. Nothing a bit of solder wouldn't sort out, though. Mm, that's, uh, it's not secure enough for my liking. I'm going to put a bit of uh, solder on the ends of these. and If I get this working, I'll probably end up buying some crimpers, because I think it's... A sign that I need some just to crimp some ends onto it. Let's just add a tad of flux. I wouldn't recommend doing this while leaning on the tool, but it doesn't matter, it's my own tool. Just want to give the solder somewhere to, uh, sorry, the uh, screw somewhere to bite onto, to be honest. It's awkward without a helping hand, though. There you go, that's got a bit of solder on it. Somewhere for the solder to bite, and I'll do the other one in a second as well. That's better, I can feel it biting now. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. It's so much more secure. See that one, I mean that one's fairly secure, but I'm going to add a little bit of solder to that one as well. Just for the sake of it. Melted the tool a little bit to use, using it to lean on, but whatever. It's already a bit beaten up anyway, doesn't matter. I personally don't care. By the way, don't send me your tools to repair because I don't want to repair them for other people. I don't mind doing it for myself, but not for other people. It's just a bit of fun to me. I'm sure after seeing what I just did to this, to this tool, no one's going to send them to me anyway, so... Win win. <laughs> anyway, there we go. That's beautiful. For those of you that don't know, Urbera is actually owned by Screwfix. Um, they, they do just have the stuff imported, but it's owned by Screwfix, and uh, they're not the best build quality. They're good, cheap tools, but they're not the greatest in terms of the build quality. You know, they certainly do the job, though. They do get the job done. Right, there we go. So, finally, I've got the cable installed. Um, it's nice and secure. The, uh, the anti-tug thing, whatever it's called, is on there. Um, it's not coming, any, not coming out any time soon. And it's fairly safe or it should be fairly safe i know that the fuse is good in this because like i said it come off my extension reel so i know everything's good on this on in terms of the cable let's have a look right no bangs and pops it's plugged in keep hands well clear of the blade he says that he touches it uh why is that why is that not locked Hmm. Well, it actually works. You 
it actually powers on and works. And why is it not locked in? So you're meant to be able to just pop the blade out, but for some reason. I mean, that's not that's not normal either. Seems a bit loose on that pop rivet on those pop rivets as well. Uh, I might need to hunt around for some spares for this. It might need a new head. You know the actual bit where the blade goes. Um, that seems to be. Well, seized up, I guess. So, you're meant to be able to just pull this lever, and I think this turns and removes the, uh, allows you to remove the saw blade. But obviously, as you can see there, that's, that's loose. I mean, it's certainly not safe to use. So, that's loose. You know, it's moving freely up and down. And also, the head here isn't actually turning. So, it's not allowing me to release it. And I can't get down in there to try and forcefully turn it. I'll go and get a pair of pliers and see if I can find a way to turn that. All right, so I can't seem to find a pair of pliers. I never bloody can when I need them. Um, I'm just going to turn this off because I shouldn't be working on it while it's plugged in. Anything could happen. So I'll just uh, just unplug that. And just make sure. Yep, yeah, there we go. That's dead. Uh, yeah, so this seems to be jammed, which is probably why it's been thrown out, to be honest. But basically, what I need to do... I'm not really bothered about that. That's not really an issue for me. Uh, what I need to do is somehow turn this. Um, so the way that it's meant to work is you pull this lever and it turns this and unlocks the blade. It looks like someone's got the blade half in there and then it's jammed up. So I'm just going to use this adjustable spanner and just... Try and uh, try and turn it manually. I suppose. Don't know if it's going to work or not. I could do it with a pair of mole whips, but I can't find mine. No, that's not going. To... Oh, there you go. Got it. Right. Is that going to release? Hey, there we go. Right, so that blade has come out. It looks like the blade snapped. So that blade's come out. So it looks like that has seized up. Um, I haven't got any WD-40 or anything like that, so I might have to put this video on hold, maybe. Well, it does turn the one way now, and then I can just push it back the other way, I suppose. I guess it's just a case of loosening it up. I assume that's the maximum it can turn. And just, I guess what I might have to do if it won't release, because I don't think you can get spares for this. I have looked. I guess the one thing I would have to do is just, when I need to change the blade, which wouldn't be that often, just do it manually. You know, get a pair of pliers or adjustable spanner or something and just push it manually. I reckon that's probably going to turn even more, though. It's a bit awkward to get it on camera. I 
Yeah, see, that's too loose. But that's that's not locked in. I think that this is meant to turn more. I'm going to try and uh, forcefully turn it some more, I think. I think he's meant to turn more and that's why he's not li not locking in. I could be wrong, but... It could just be that the entire head is knackered and it's unfixable. You know, given the fact that I can't get any spares for it. Or I can't find any at the minute. It's not turning any more than that, though. I think it, I think it could just be that the blade's damaged and there's possibly... Something stopping it from, uh, from turning. But I can get some WD-40 and some and stuff tomorrow as well. Actually, I've got WD-40. I've just realised I've got some in the office. Let's grab some real quick. There you go. Remove that. Spray a bit of that in it and leave it a couple of minutes. Ha! Huh, that's just loosened up. Let's add some more. Yeah, it's still not moving with the quick release. It's a lot of excess WD-40. Still not moving with the quick release, um, which is obviously an issue. And I'm pretty sure it should spring back on its own as well. But now that's just pushed back further. Let's just pop that blade in there. And let's push that back. That isn't all the way. Yeah, it's still moving freely and it shouldn't be. It's like the blade's not going in all the way to lock it in. That's what it seems like. And I know this blade is damaged. I wouldn't keep this blade in here. It's just not latching in at all. It seemed to go back it back further without the blade in. And the blade's locked in, but it's just not. It's not locking in, locking in. See, releasing it manually wouldn't be an issue. It's just getting it to lock in, I suppose. This is starting to move a bit more freely now, though. Maybe. Ah, yeah, there we go. So that is actually uh, starting to work its way free. So the WD-40 is doing its job. So I don't know if you can see this, but when it's got no blading, it's going all the way back to the catch. So the catch is there. It's going all the way back to the catch. 
But when the blade is in, it doesn't seem to want to go that far back. I am managing to get it to open a bit easier now, though. Yeah, I don't think that's normal. Well, I know it's not normal. It's not meant to be loose like that. As far as I'm aware, it's meant to go all the way back and lock in. Maybe I'll try tomorrow with a new blade. I'm trying to get it to go all the way back and it's just not having it. So now it's locked in, but as soon as I put any kind of pressure on that, that's it. It's just not having it. Well, then again... No. No, it just works its way loose, doesn't it? Um, I think a lot of that is just debris build-up. I might have to get, like, um, a wire brush tomorrow as well as um, a brand new blade. And try it all... See, look, that now, I can release that now. Whereas before, I couldn't. Could definitely do with my, uh, just, my, uh, mole grips instead, though. I just can't be looking for tools at this time of night, that's the problem. So I think I might put it on hold. And I know I've said that for the past ten minutes, but... I think I've got to. I will try with a new blade tomorrow. Because obviously I can't live with uh, the blade coming loose like that. It's no good like that. It's unsafe for a start. Plus I'll give the WD-40 um, some time to work its way in as well. Could do with a wire brush. Alright, oh, no. I've had enough for the night. That is locked in right now. Well, it was locked in. See, that's what I mean, though. Like, it's locked in. But obviously, you can't have a rip saw that moves backwards and forwards, up and down. Well, backwards and forwards, yes, but not up and down. Uh, yeah, I'll get a brand new blade tomorrow. I have got some brand new blades. Um, I'll also find some mole grips and stuff that I can use just to try and assist me. A little bit better. I might be able to get a better grip on it with mole grips. I think I know what the issue is. It looks like it's just not moving back far enough. That's what it appears as though it's happening to me. And maybe by tomorrow the WD-40 will have done a better job as well. Alright, let's give, let's give that some time. And I'll uh, pause the video till tomorrow. Right, so that's my partner, and uh, unfortunately, I can't find my rip saw blades. I think I might have gave them to my brother-in-law. Maybe I'm not 100% sure, but I just can't find them anyway. So yeah, that's not really a problem though, because there's nothing wrong with the end of this rip saw blade. So obviously, you know, I've got to. I'm going to try my best to make this work. I don't think there's anything wrong with that rip saw blade at all. It's probably barely been used and someone's just snapped it. Um, you know, it doesn't look like the blade is really that worn anyway. So I don't think there's going to be anything wrong with this. I have managed to pick up a pair of mole grips though. Uh, so I'm just going to have another quick look. But it might it might come to it. I've, I've applied some more um, WD-40 by the way. But it might come to it where I end up having to... You know, just try and wait to see if I can find some spares because I know that uh, berry you can't buy spares for them. I'd literally have to just wait until I come across another one of these rip saws on the uh, the scrap or something like that. Which I mean, to be fair, it's probably going to be something that I do come across eventually. So you know, I could just have it sitting around doing nothing for a little while. Uh, I am just going to try the mole grips though. You know, just something with a bit of a better grip on it before I call it a day on this one. But I don't think that I'm going to be able to fix this one today, which is unfortunate. I'm just going to try the mole grips. I think, from the look of it, 
I think that this is a case where it's just not going back all the way, which is probably not locking the pin, the, you know, the, the uh, locating pin in or something. I don't know. But at least I can get a little bit more leverage on the mole grips and a better grip on it as well. I'll just uh, adjust it so as I can actually get a better grip on it, that is. Maybe I just need a new head for it, you know, the actual mechanism here. It does appear as though it's seized up or something. Uh, a little bit wide. Yeah, it's rather annoying really because it would have made a good tool. But obviously it can't be used if the blade's just going to keep coming loose. No, sadly not. Oh, but yeah, I mean, it's a little bit tighter like that. It's a lot tighter like that, in fact, but it's just not, it's just not having it, is it? So I don't know if you can actually tell what I mean by this, like when I say that it's not going back far enough. So when the blade's not in, this, whatever the hell you call it, pushes all the way back to this red clip. You know, that red clip is the lever for the, um, yeah, yeah, to push it forward so as you can release it, the quick release lever, that's it. Um... But when I actually put the blade in, it doesn't go all the way back. So if I just turn this again, I've got to force it again now because I have just, well, I've just tightened that really, really tight. I mean, if I have to use it like that, then I have to use it like that. You know, if I have to manually tighten it up, I mean, depending on what you're doing, how often do you actually replace a blade because I know me personally I don't use a rip saw very often so if I push that all the way back now can you see that you see how it's all the way back and then obviously the lever makes contact pretty much straight away with it right Whereas with the blade in, so if I just bring that, it's actually springing back somewhat now as well. Please excuse my hands as well, by the way, I've just been hunting through toolboxes. My hands are not usually dirty, but I want to get this video finished. So if I put that, put that blade in, that's kind of its final resting point, and because of that, that's really loose. If I tighten it up manually, Oh, I felt that click. I really did feel that click. So if I tighten it up manually, can you see how it's not so loose anymore? So I think I just need to come up with a... Well, I just need to basically wait until I can get a, a new um, head. So I don't think there's going to be anything more that I can do for this. You know, I mean, it's working, but I don't know how safe it's really going to be, just given the fact that you know, it's obviously got a chance of coming loose and I don't think I trust it enough to actually use it. So I don't think I will be using it. I mean, I paid £4 for it, so let's be honest, it's not like it's the end of the world, right? But until I can get one of these heads here, I don't know what you call it, please someone in the comments let me know uh, if you know. But if I can get one of those heads, then obviously this will be fixable. You know, it wouldn't be so bad but obviously because i don't have any ability to get one and I, there's no other spare parts available online i'm kind of in a little bit of a pickle but on the plus side everything else seems to be working so if i can't you know if i do end up sitting on it for too long and i can't get a replacement head for it worst case scenario i can strip it down and supply parts to someone who needs something other than that i mean is that a common failure point i don't know but yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Um, I'm going to add...
some more WD-40. So I'm going to keep on adding WD-40 to it, maybe. Um, and, you know, eventually it might free itself up. I doubt it. I mean, chances are this has been either worked with in a very dusty environment or it's, uh, you know, it's obviously been left outside because it is quite rusty as well. So it's probably been left outside and for that reason it's not working, but... Never mind, it is what it is, I suppose. There's not really a lot that I can do about it if I can't get the spare parts for it and if I can't free it up, so to speak. So, yeah, for now, I mean, that seems pretty safe. But, I don't know, I don't think I'd want to use it, to be honest. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. It's, I guess it's a partial fix, right? Uh, but, for now, it's really, really unusable. If anyone knows where I can get one of those heads from, let me know, please, and I will obviously, well, weigh up the options and see what the price is because these are only about £70 brand new to buy now, so they're not really expensive. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer them. And if you do want to see more of this type of stuff, don't forget to get subscribed, turn on the bell notifications, and you won't miss any future videos. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah.